Let us continue to gather for worship today. Uh, I'm glad to see all of you here. It's good to know that there are guests coming today. Uh, we, we praise the Lord for blessing us with a day that's not too good for fishing. It's a good day for worshiping. <laughs> that's a joke. <laughs> I do want to... Uh, Becky will have announcements in a minute, but I wanted to just say, fill out your request cards if you have them and, and, and get them to me. Today is All Saints Sunday, and so one of the components of this service is going to be that during my sermon, we're going to have a time to remember those who have died in the past year. Since November the 1st, if you know of people that died since last November the 1st, at one point in my sermon, I'm going to ask you to... Sp to uh, Speak aloud their names, and then we will have a memorial for those persons who have died in the last year since November the 1st. I had a couple of things that I don't think are in the bulletin, and Becky will not have, too. Uh, we're going to have, uh, we're changing the Wednesday night Bible study to 4 o'clock in the afternoon. And this week we're going to, it's called the ABCs of the Old Testament. And we're going to talk about Jeremiah and Isaiah. We're going to look at the prophets primarily at 4 o'clock on Wednesday. Uh, and there's another group that I wanted to mention, and it's absolutely slipping my mind. Maybe it'll come later. And I'm sure that Becky will say something about the fall festival. But thank you, Becky, for your leadership and for all the people that contributed to that. It did make a good feeling for our church that happened yesterday. Well, good morning, and we're glad you're all here. We ask you take a moment and sign our attendance pad so we know who's with us, and if you have any special needs, please let us know. Our Welcome Wednesdays, as Pastor said, um, it's an intergenerational evening of fellowship and activities. It begins at 4, 8, 4 p.m. There's art classes provided, a meal for family, the Sci-Fi Youth Group, and our living H2O College Age Group. And Pastor will lead the ABCs of the Old Testament. If you want to know specifics, please look in your bulletin calendar. And next Sunday is one of the favorites of everybody here. We have our all-church Thanksgiving dinner. It is after worship, and there's turkey, dressing, potatoes, and drinks will be provided. We ask you to bring a side dish or two and your own place servings. And we look forward for everyone being there. There's always a lot of good food. We are very good cooks at this church. And um, I'd like to also thank everybody for helping in our first fall festival. I think there will be another one. That's right, Jen, we raised the roof. And I think, as Pastor said, a lot of good feelings about our church were portrayed to the community. More people found out about our essential pantry and the works we do to help provide for those in need. And I don't have final figures, but it was over $500 raised to help fund that <laughs> ministry. And there was a lot of good food there because we have, like I said, great cooks and good bakers. And uh, thanks to the ladies and the gentlemen who helped with that. Also, if you want more good food, you want to come to the Christmas brunch, the tickets are available from any uh, CWF member. It is Saturday, December 9th from 7.30 to 5 or 7.30 to 11. I'm not reading so well. So any of the, I think Linda Van Gundy had tickets yesterday at our festival. 
Anything else by anybody else? Did I miss? Yes, Carol? We have some of the cookies and breads left for sale. Okay. Uh, Carol said there's a few platters of cookies and there's some homemade breads for sale. If you're interested, they're on the table out in the Williams room. With all that being said, let's turn our eyes to Jesus and open with prayer. Heavenly Father, Jesus Christ and Holy Spirit, renew our hearts today. Renew our spirits and our minds. Remind us, Father, how much we have to be thankful for. Just the air we breathe is enough to worship you. But you've enriched our lives with friends, with loved ones, with our material possessions so that none of us is in need. Help us to remember now and always that in a time when our world seems so chaotic, you are there to breathe into our hearts the love you have for us and that we only need to ask to feel your loving embrace around us. Bless all of us here today. In your name we pray, amen. Our first hymn of praise is How Firm a Foundation, number 275. Please stand. time. Let's come on down front and join me.
I have a brown bag today. Anybody ever keep secrets in a brown bag? No. Not nice to see you. I've got something. Oh, you know what? I left it in my office. I was going to show you a picture of my two boys. I have baby boys. Did you know that? Yeah, I've got two baby boys. Of course, they're 51 and 47, but they're still babies to me. <laughs> and you know what, Bentley and Layla? I've got something for you in this brown bag. Now, I'm going to pretend that both of you help me clean my house, rake my yard, work in the church, do some dusting, and I'm going to give you allowance. You've got a dollar for allowance. And you know what? I even have a dollar for Sydney. And you know what? This brown bag has a dollar for Libya. You all four get allowance. Yay! Now, I used to do this to my boys. I'd give them allowance. And they'd help my wife and they'd help their mama and me do things. Isn't it fun to have a family? I think it's great to have moms and dads and grandmas and grandpas, aunts and uncles, sisters and brothers and cousins. Yeah. Now, the reason I've given you this dollar in part is you, you earned it. We're going to pretend you earned it. Now, I'm going to also tell you that you have an, ap an opportunity to give back 10% of that dollar to God and to the church. 10% would be how much? <laughs> Are you a mathematician? <laughs> well, 10 cents. 10 dimes would make $1. Why don't you write your names on this? This is, this, you can put your name on here. Each of you. Okay. Bentley, here. I'm going to put your name on here, okay? Let me, let's write your name on there, Bentley. You want me to write it on for you? Okay, here, I'll write it for you. What I always ask my boys to do is to give something to God from what they earned, whether they were paper boys or whatever they were doing. Now, you don't put the dollar in there this time because 90 cents of that dollar is yours to keep, to buy ice cream, to spend, to buy a gift for somebody. But here's the 10%. Here's the tithe. The Bible says that we should tithe all our all of our possessions and our earnings to God's work. So put the dime inside that envelope. Here it is. And you've got your name on that envelope. And you've got, uh, so now, we're gonna ask you to put these in the offertory when there's an offering today. And that way, with your name on it, Robert will know what you gave. And remember, you get a tax deduction for giving this to the church. <laughs> remember this on your income tax. That's not the reason you give it, but it's not a bad little byproduct. Okay, let it. Hmm? You, want, you want to just look at it like that? You got your diamond there? Okay, now you get to keep the dollar. You might tell me what you do with that dollar next Sunday. Let's just find out what you do next Sunday. Okay, let's pray. Hold you. Lord God, we give thanks to you for your gifts to us. And we have an opportunity to give back to you and to give to people who are, who are needy, who are hungry. We can give to missions all over the world as well as here in Emporia. We're thankful that we, as your boys and your girls, count. And you want us to make a difference. In Jesus' name, let us all say, Amen. Amen. All right. I would now like to read to you our gospel lesson, which comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 18, verses 9 through 14. To some who were confident of their own righteousness and looked down on everybody else, 
Jesus told this parable. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood up and prayed about himself, God, I thank you that I am not like other men, the robbers, the evildoers, the adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week and give a tenth of all I get. But the tax collector stood at a distance. He would not even look up to heaven, but beat his breast and said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. I tell you that this man, rather than the other, went home justified before God. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, but he who humbles himself will be exalted. Our next hymn, Are You Able? It is on the insert in your bulletin. Let's sing verses one, two, and four. We'll just sing verses one, two, and four. I chose this hymn right after the reading of the gospel because I thought it was interesting about who is the one who is able from that scripture to do God's work. Uh, was it the Pharisee or was it the tax collector, also called the publican? Interesting question. 
I also chose as him because my father studied under Earl Marlott at SMU in Dallas. Earl Marlott was a New Testament professor and a teacher of homiletics, which is a, means to teach a fancy word for preaching. Uh, Earl Marlott, uh, I might tell you that this hymn is kind of an interesting little historical side note. Most of the new hymnals left Are Ye Able Out for several reasons, but one reason is that chorus where it says, Our spirits are thine, remove them, make us like thee divine. A bunch of the people who put together the hymn books resented that and said, That's not theologically sound. We cannot be divine. Now that's fundamentalism gone totally bizarre. Earl Marlick doesn't think that we're going to become divine, but that line meant that this sin was left out of most of the hymnals, including the one that we have in our pews here today. We're going to have our time of offertory. I think we have special music also from Austin during this offertory, and I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, I'm going to um, have both the words of invitation and the prayer, and as soon as I complete the prayer, the Ushers will come down and take up the offering, and we'll have our special music then. They shall not appear before the Lord empty-handed. Everyone shall give as able, according to the blessing of the Lord your God, which he has given you. O Lord, you have blessed us in ways that we cannot number or describe. Now bless us again as we bring to you these tithes and offerings, but most of all, bless those whose lives are touched and changed by our gifts. Amen.
From the Old Testament, a psalm, number 107. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say this, those he redeemed from the hand of the foe, those he gathered from the lands, from east and west, from north and south. Come, some wandered in desert wastelands, finding no way to a city where they could wait. They were hungry and thirsty, and their lives ebbed away. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He led them by the straight way to a city where they could settle. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for men. For he satisfies the thirsty and, he hung and the hungry with good things. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. <clears throat> 